This discussion is entitled The Six-Step Plan for Hypothesis Testing, Putting Everything Together. And this lesson or this discussion is intended to help you master hypothesis testing one step at a time. And of course, this is brought to you by your friend and colleague, the infamous Dr. Dog. Many different ways exist to conduct a hypothesis test, but I generally like to use a six-step plan and the six steps are laid out here. The first thing that you do is you declare the null hypothesis. This is H naught, where you may say mu equals seven, or it may be H naught P equals 0 0.84. That is the claim. The alternate hypothesis is HA, and we examined the, in our other uh, videos, we showed that HA can be three different possibilities. Just for instance, for mu, if the null hypothesis is H naught mu equals seven, HA can be mu is not equal to seven, mu is less than seven, mu is greater than seven. So you declare the null hypothesis as the claim. The alternate hypothesis is the opposite of the claim. Now, you calculate a critical value, and to do that, you need to know whether it's large sample or small sample. It, you need to know what your level of confidence is. If it's large sample, you use a z-score. If it's small sample, you use a t-score, and you use that for that given confidence and so many degrees of freedom. The test statistic is, is your effect size divided by your standard error, as we previously discussed. Now, in order to make a statistical decision, you must examine your test statistic in light of your critical value. And it's, it's going to, you're, you're, you only have two possibilities. You either reject the null hypothesis or you fail to reject it. Then once you're through making that decision, you word the statistical decision into a readable format. You have to learn to speak to non-nerds if you're going to be a statistician. So the six-step plan is pretty easy. Declare the null hypothesis, the alternate hypothesis, determine the critical value, and you draw a picture for that, and then you calculate the test statistic, see where it fits in the picture. Is it inside or outside the boundary? If it's inside the bounds, you fail to reject. If it's outside the bounds, you reject the null hypothesis, and then you word that for non-nerds. Really a very easy process, a six-step plan. I'm back in the dog cave again. In order to help you understand this six-step process, what I'm going to do is work through a sample problem. Hang on, you'll enjoy it. To help you understand this concept, consider the following problem. An online used bookseller is being audited, and she claims that she only earned 439 in book sales per week for the 0607 year. And of course, the IRS believes that her average weekly earnings were more. Uh, the basis being that if her earnings were more, then she's going to have to pay more in taxes. So the IRS came in and took a random sample of her earnings for 48, uh, 38 different weeks. The amount of money earned was $520 a week with a standard deviation of $104. And the IRS examined her position at a 5% error. Now, the first thing that you would do in step one is you write the null hypothesis. Mu equals 439. That's the claim. Step two is the alternate hypothesis. The IRS believes that her earnings were more than 439, so our alternate hypothesis is going to be that Mu is greater than 439. We need now to do our confidence, uh, Z confidence level. And we have a large sample because N is 38, so we're, it's going to be a Z-score. Confidence level is 5%, and this is a one-tail test. If our alternate hypothesis is Mu is greater than, it's a one-tail test. So our confidence, Z-confidence, is 1.645. Now, look at the picture of this. That's what I want you to see. The, the mean, of course, on, on this table is zero. So the z-score of 439 is zero. The z-score that would put us as our boundary and allow 5% to be out on this end is 1.645. Now what that means is, is that this, any, any test statistic that falls in here is a fail to reject. The test statistics that fall out here are a reject h naught. 
we calculate Z test, and it is the, the X bar minus the mu, 520 minus 439 divided by the standard error. And this is a mean standard error, so it is 104 S divided by the square root of N, which is 38, and we come up with 4.8. So our Z test is 4.80, which if we look at it in light of the picture, falls in the reject region. So our decision is to reject H0. Now what that means is, is that based on the sample taken, the online booksellers claim that our average weekly sales are 439 is too low. Her sales were more than 439, and the IRS is about to get her, and they're going to buy her in the rear end and charge her a whole much more in taxes. Now, isn't this cool?